everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, I have a special message for all the young folks who listen to Lum and Abner. If you young people haven't yet discovered Horlicks tablets, now's the time to do so. You like these delicious tablets just as well as candy, and they're the very same ones, you know, that lots of athletes, aviators, and racing motorists use to keep themselves on the go. They'll help make you better at games, give you extra pep and energy, and they sure are grand to eat. As good as anything you've ever had. Ask Mother to get you some. They cost only ten cents a flask, you know. And don't forget to tell her, though, how good and wholesome Horlick's tablets are. And that they won't spoil your appetite. Horlick's malted milk tablets contain the same valuable nourishment as Horlick's in powder form. She can get them at the druggists in either natural or chocolate flavor, whichever you prefer. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire's little scheme of having an old business associate of his come to Pine Ridge and pose as a Mr. Worthington, a wealthy mine operator from Arizona, certainly worked out as he had planned. After Mr. Worthington offered the stockholders a million dollars for their silver mine, and the offer was rejected, the citizens of Pine Ridge have been putting every dollar they can lay their hands on into more stock in the mine. As we look in on our friends today, we find Lum over at Dick Huddleston's store, Still trying to interest Dick in purchasing some stock in the company. Listen. Well, it's just ruin in Pine Ridge. I've never seen business as quiet as it is right now in my life. They must be putting every dollar they can get their hands on into that mining stock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's selling like hotcakes. Ever since that Mr. Worthington offered Squire a million dollars for the mine, folks are just begging to buy stock in it. <laughs> Call me up over at the house and stopping me on the street and everything else. Well, there's a check for my commissions on what I've sold yesterday and today. See, I get 10% commission. You mean you made $85 since yesterday? Yeah, and I've sold about $400 worth, and I ain't collected commissions on yet. Well, no wonder business is falling off the bat here in the store, then. Well, I don't know where it's all coming from. Well, I never had no idea there's that much cash in Pine Ridge. <laughs> Mortgaging their farms and crops and selling off stuff. <laughs> doing anything they can to raise cash. Yeah, I know they are. And they're coming down here and want me to sell them groceries on the credit. Say they'll pay me when they get their dividends out of that mining stock. Uh, yeah. Won't be long before they'll all be raised. Now, they're going to pay me cash or they don't take it out of here. Swan Dick, you're the hardest fellow to see things. You ought to know by now that this mine's a good invest after that fellow Worthington offered us a million dollars for it. Yeah, well, offering it and paying it's two different things, Lon. Uh, I don't believe he would have paid a million dollars for it. Well, he got right up there in the meeting and said he would. Got mad because Squire wouldn't take it. Yeah, Squire was about the only one that didn't want to sell it, wasn't he? Well, he was at first, but after he explained to the stockholders how much the mine was showing up worth, none of us wanted to take that first. Yeah, well, I'll know something in a few days. I'm doing a little investigating on my own here. Investigating. Yeah, it's probably none of my business, Lum, except that most of these people around here put money in there, my friends of mine. And I just can't help but believe that there's something phony about that fellow Worthing. Oh, I don't know why. Driven here in a big automobile. Body could tell by looking at him that he's a millionaire. Yeah, of course, that was the impression that he wanted to leave all right. I had a long talk with him. He owns diamond mines and gold mines and oil wells and railroads and banks. <laughs> I don't know what all. He does. Owns so much stuff, he can't keep track of it himself. One minute he'd tell you he's in the oil business, and the next time he'd say he's a railroad or steamboat business. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me none. Be a good size interest in the giver man, too. Didn't you say that Squire told you he was from Arizona? Yeah. Yeah, lives right there close to the mine, he said. Got a big mansion. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Drove all the way from Arizona, cleaned the pine ridges without getting out of the car. See, he was in a terrible hurry trying to get here before somebody else bought the mine off of it. Well, what I can't understand is he's from Arizona. What's he doing with an Oklahoma license tag on his car? Oklahoma? Yeah, didn't you notice that? No, I never paid no attention. I reckon he just got the wrong license tags on somewhere or other. See, I expect his oil wells is over there, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. I'll find out. I know that. He want me to go back with him. <laughs> he took right up with me. Said I was one of the best businessmen he'd ever run across. 
Said that before I'd know him in ten minutes. Well. I reckon he can just tell him when he sees him. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Of course, I couldn't leave here now, being prayers down the silver mine. It's getting to be such a big responsibility. Got to sign all them stock certificates and all that. And this reminds me, too, I've got to fix myself up some more shares before the squire decides to quit selling it. <laughs> Just endorse this check right back over to him, see. Now, how many shares do you got now, Ron? Uh, six. Three hundred dollars worth. Well, it looks to me like if that's going to be worth as much as you say it is, why, you've got enough stock now to make you rich. Oh, my, I reckon it will. <laughs> I'll never have to turn another hand. Well, you don't need to invest any more in it then, do you? No, don't need to, for that go, but I never hear to nobody complain about having too much money. <laughs> Getting over it. Well, no, no, but if I was you, Lum, I believe I'd take this money and put it in the bank. Just in case if something does happen to the mine, why, you'll have something to fall back on. Something happened to it. Yeah, you just play safe. The mine might have a cave in, or it might not be as much silver in there as you think there is. No, lots of things could happen. Yeah, I reckon accidents might happen and might not anything. Cyclone might strike it and blow it away or something. Can't control the element. Why no? And if you've got a little money in the bank and then stock in the mine both, why you're safe either way. Yeah, there's reasoning, all right. Reasoning. That's a good sound argument. Don't know what you're right, Dick. I'll just put this in the bank. what I'll do. That's the thing to do. That's the smartest thing I've heard you say in two weeks, son. Uh, don't reckon you'll be going in there tomorrow with you to the county seat? No, I reckon not. Yeah, that's all right. I thought I'd get you to make a desk pocket for me, but Abner will not to be going in. <laughs> you got to worry. He keeps that road hot in there since you got that car and chauffeur. <laughs> By the way, how'd this party come out last night? Why, all right, I reckon. I had to take out and quit about 6 o'clock this morning. Get some sleep. Grandpap and Abner were still going strong last time I seen them. At 6 o'clock this morning? Yeah. They were fixing to go into the county seat. Abner had a golf game with that fella sold him that automobile for this morning, and then in the afternoon they was going to the races. And they didn't get any sleep at all? Never closed eyes. Oh, goodness me. Danced till midnight, and then they had that swimming party down at the mill pond. Got back to Abner's place about was about four thirty, I reckon, and we all had breakfast together, scrambled eggs and bacon. Well, now they can't keep that pace up long. Oh, of course not. Abner's just making a plum goose out of it. I thing. never saw anything like it. Disgusting. Yes, sir. You ought to saw him down there at the mill pond. I think he just gave that swimming party to show off that new bath jacket he got. <laughs> Boy, like big yellow stripes running around. Boy, goodness <laughs> sake. Put me in mind of a yellow jacket running down there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'd like to have seen that Abner in a bathing suit. <laughs> Never missed a thing. <laughs> well, we started to have sense enough to stay away from that party. The ideas of grown folks staying out all night that way. Yeah. I don't think nobody enjoyed this hell. Just don't want to admit that they can't keep up with Abner. That's your trouble. <laughs> Poor old Uncle Henry Lunsford. <laughs> Went sound asleep right there at the breakfast table this morning. <laughs> Got sorghum all over his beard and everything else. <laughs> well, he can't keep going like that. Uncle Henry? No, Abner. He'll have that $2,000 spent in a few days the rate he's going now. Wait a minute. For goodness sakes, look coming down the road, John. Huh? Looks like a cyclone. Like somebody in the car. Yeah, that's what it is. Now, Ballinger, you know who it is, too. Couldn't be nobody but that Abner driving. Well, he that better way. be slowing down if he expects to stop within five miles of town. Yeah, that's him, all right. Yeah, that's him. Wait a minute, look out. He's heading right in look here out, for the look door. Out here. He stopped that thing. Look out, Abner. Look out. Well, hey, honey boy. Abner, you eat you scare the daylights out of a fella. Come on, Get out of there. Are we here ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. It's taking us uh, 28 minutes. 28 minutes from where? I'm a county seat. Well, that's 30 miles in there. Yeah, I know it. You can't make no time around them curves. Uh, just take the car on over and put it in the barn, Adolph. You better get a hammer and see if you can't straighten up that fender a little, too. Now, that reminds me. Uh, can I use your telephone a minute, Dick? Yeah, sure, Adam. It's right on the inside of the door there. I've never taken such a ride in my life. We straighten out the curves in that road quick here in the county seat, I'll say you that. Yeah, and if you don't quit running around that Abner, you're going to show up missing one of these days, too. Hello? Is this Barton's place? Well, this is Abner Peabody over at Pine Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon you wondered what that water circled down through your front yard a while ago, didn't you? <laughs> Let me sit down here. Yeah, it was me. 
get dead. Well, we never aimed to scare you. We just couldn't make that curve there in the road. Barney well, tore down about four sections of that picket fence. Well, now, just have that fence patched up, John. Send me a bill for it, and I'll pay you for the damages. Went in one side of the gate there and come out about two or three yeah. sections down on the other side of it. Never even slowed up. All right, John. I'm awful sorry it happened, but it was better than turning over. <laughs> well, I do know. Well, I hope you find them all. Okay, Tut. Goodbye. What did he say, Abner? Why, he said it scared the daylight out of them children of his'n. Say they ain't got them all rounded up yet. Yeah, more than likely come up under the house there. Right? Yeah, you're going to hurt somebody with that car, Abner. I'll be glad when you get all that $2,000 spent. I'll swan your uh, minister societies around here. Why, well, I ain't did nothing. Me and Grandpapa was just in a hurry to get home. We've got to get dressed and get to that dinner party over at the Winter Abernathy. Another party tonight? Why, sure. Ain't you going? No, sir. I'm cutting out a lot of this society foolishness. But he's got to get to some rest sometime. Uh, did you go to the races today, Abner? Yeah, I'll say we did. I don't get that horse racing. is a nut, too. We took them for a cleaning. Win $42. I had a fin right on Grand Slam Snarzola. They win by eight lengths. <laughs> hey, we can pick them, can't we, kid? Hey, Grandpa, yeah. Well, I'll be dead blamed. <laughs> Poor old fella sound asleep. Look at that. That's sort of pitiful. Well, I can see right now I'm going to have to get me another running mate. Grandpa's a giver out of He just can't take it. <laughs> it looks like Lum will have to forfeit his title of the Pine Ridge Playboy. And now, in the minute or so we have left, I want to pass on a tip to you all. A lot of Lum and Abner's friends have written in lately to tell us what a fine aid Horlicks is in producing sound, refreshing sleep. Taken last thing at night, they say, it helps you fall asleep much quicker. Once asleep, it helps you sleep more soundly, awaken more refreshed next morning. Here's the reason for that. Horlicks is a soothing, relaxing beverage that helps rebuild worn-out tissues while you sleep and helps renew the energy you lose each day. So if you find it hard to get to sleep at night, if you don't sleep soundly, by all means, get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor, whichever you prefer. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time.